Okay, welcome to the uh, video that's going to discuss the no demand, no supply signal, standard VSA. Uh, so we're going to look at, first of all, the traditional definition. <clears throat> and then we'll get into some more uh, of the nuances. So to start with the traditional definition of uh, no supply, Firstly, the volume, this is that candle, This the volume has to be lower than the previous two. <clears throat> so we see that there. That doesn't have to be a big difference. We're just giving you the technical definition here. So it's lower than the previous two. That's the first thing. Uh, also, the candle has to be bearish in the case of a no supply. If it's a no demand, it has to be bullish. So it's basically just the opposite. So a no supply has to be bearish, red candle, and it also needs to, I'll zoom in a little more, close off the low. So there has to be some sort of pin there on the bottom, at least something. So a solid close uh, down at the bottom would not be a no supply. So that is the technical definition, and we'll look at that, we call that a potential no supply until it's confirmed on the next candle. <clears throat> So once price moves above the high, this candle, then it's considered confirmed. And that's often an entry point for, for many VSA traders, very common textbook uh, entry there. Um, so to get into a little more about, you know, the, the different ways that you could handle it and, and trade it um, and some of the, uh, the the nuances here. Uh, I, I wait for a candle to close to confirm it 90% uh, of the time, most of the time. Uh, and, you know, it's like looking back, uh, there are losses that I've taken that I would have avoided had I waited for the close. So, I, you know, every time that happens, I get more, I do it less and less. And so I'm now at the point where I barely, you know, I usually wait for the close. And, um, you know, I see I see entries go by that I that I don't, don't take that wouldn't have worked out. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing that, you know, more and more almost every time now. So if not, you know, I'm waiting for the last, you know, at least the last 30 seconds or so. So uh, in this case, you know, waiting for that to close is, for a long entry is valid. Uh, some VSA traders would set, you know, uh, an entry order a couple of pips above a high and just let it, let the let the market come up and hit it or not. Um, I personally don't do that, but that's common. I think you, if you wait for the candle to close, and you know who knows what can go on before a candle is finished, um, and you let that happen you have a, a slightly better probability on that trade uh, because, of course, you can have a scenario where price moves up. Uh, you get your order, but by the time the candle closes, in the last 30 seconds, whatever, uh, it pushes down, even makes a new low. Anything can happen. It can push up there in the beginning of the candle, and who knows what for the next uh, you know, five minutes may go on. So I like that close gives a little bit of probability, confirming that. I guess the downside would be you may you may you know get you'll get a worse price entry price often because you know a couple of pips above there you know you're getting right in if you're waiting for a close that close could be anywhere and it could it could shoot up and you you don't get an entry at all so depends how aggressive you want to be but you know there's two sides to it if you wait for that confirmation you're not getting as good of a price you'll make less pips in the end uh, most of the time <clears throat> all right so let's see. I have some notes. I'm somewhat prepared here. Um, all right, what would cancel out this potential no supply? Of course, it would be a uh, close below. So price is allowed to come below that candle, but as long as it doesn't close below. So you'll end up with a pin on the bottom. And if anything, you know, a pin on the bottom and a close above would be a sign of strength. So, uh, but but that's that's the rule I go by. 
uh, if if price were to sit here for a couple of candles and then confirm, that's valid. But as long you know, as long as there's no close below this initial low that's made here. So those closes really matter to me a lot on the five minute. So of course, needless to say, you know, I, I keep the one hour in mind, the one hour phase, and I, I trade along with that. So this long setup could come during a markdown, and I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be thinking about entering. Or usually not, you know, very rare that I would do that. Um, go with the phase. Phase is your friend. <clears throat> so of course, keeping that in mind. Uh, in these examples, we're not even going to talk about background. We're just isolating these, these little things. So. That's a no supply, and then of course you have the no demand, which is the opposite. Uh, let me just check something here. Okay, so here's the no demand. There's one volume lower than the previous two. Up candle in this case because it's a no demand. Closing off the high there, you have a pin, and no close above it was made. Um, so. It's considered confirmed once it moves below or closes below, depending how you do it. This was technically a close below here. So that would confirm it there. <clears throat> so it's okay that this candle didn't confirm it. It's still valid because, um, you know, there wasn't a close above. Um, okay, so we have that standard stuff that all nice and clear there. Um, so I'll just talk about some other things, show some examples, other questions that may arise. Um, all right, well, this is just a recent example. I mean, this is just today. So um, just to point out, here is a, a no demand. It's valid. Volume there, candle, close below. And that would be a valid short entry because we do have this weakness in the background. So looking at this little picture here, you know, the widespread up bars at high volume, the inside reaction, the uh, buy climax and all that. So you even have the fake breakout back, right back into range on high volume. So all that stuff shows weakness. That's when you want to start looking for the you no know, demand. We'll talk about a little more about where exactly to look for it. Um, so it pops up there and it doesn't go. There's your entry and immediately you have drawdown. But the thing is, so I'm getting a little more into the entries and all that. Um, on these reversal trades, because we have a move up and, we're, and then we're looking to short on the uh, climax, look for a reversal. Ideally, you want to get your stop. You know, This is going to save you a lot of times and, and get you into profit and not kicked out of the trade. <coughs> if on the reversals, you have your stop loss completely outside, You know, in this case, above the top, you know, five to 10 pips above. So this trade would have worked out just fine. And, uh, you know, looking at that and your one-to-one -one risk reward and looking at your risk and all that stuff, I'm not going to get into that. But ideally, you want your stop on the other side. And if you can't do it, just know, you know, if you have a tighter stop, it may get stopped out. And it, it, you can either skip the trade if, the, if that ends up being like a 70-pip stop and it's just too much. You can skip the trade or, you know, you can go with a tighter stop and take that risk, just knowing that there is, you know, that risk that you could get stopped out and it could continue. Um so, you know, just to show the reality of what happened today, there was a no demand. It didn't just take off. You know, anything could happen. Um, but it ends up being a, a winner. And then and when this one showed up, you know, that's what you're looking for. And so often, you know, you get the weakness, you get the range. You may or may not get no demands throughout it, but it, when it finally does break and get out of there, you do have this no demand stuff happening very often. So it could have been there, you know. That's the reality. Um, one more little thing is I was considering this short, and what made me skip the trade was I, mean, I, I almost took it. I wasn't sure, but I ended up just kind of being more conservative, and you know, I'm positive for the week, so I just skipped it. But this was one of the reasons was um, this was really a sign of demand coming in. So I'm talking about the weakness in the background and, and the short entry, that, that I was thinking, you know, with this sort of reaction on high volume, Weakness comes in, sure, but we want to see lack of buying, and you know, a reaction like that um, is just a sign of strength. You know, that large pin on the bottom, just stopping that down move on high volume, and uh, so that would be a reason why you know you might want to uh, 
get below this level or wait or break through that. But the thing is, that's something to keep in mind. You know, where uh, when you're looking for these no demands, that you have a clean weakness in the background and um, not not any sign of strength coming in like that. So that that caused me to skip the trade. <clears throat> I saw this, and uh, I guess by by this point I had called it a day by 16 GMT. All right, well, just to show that, and that that ended up being a little trouble on the trade. But it made it through when it came back to that level and showed that the demand was no longer there at a level that previously had demand. So, you know, uh, that's something also a good point to make is that if you have a previous level of demand that is tested and shows a no demand, that's, that's a nice clear signal that you should be able to get through that. It's very logical there. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, this video might be a bit long, but I guess that's okay. I just marked a bunch of other examples um, somewhere in here. Yeah, things to look for, other other nuances involved. <clears throat> so in this case, you have, again, you have the weakness shown, widespread, high volume, not making any progress up. We're not looking at our background. We're just looking at these isolated examples. Um, and then to get out of this range, you have uh, no demand right there, volume lower than the previous two. Up candle, closing off the high. And then it's confirmed here. So technically, that's an entry, weakness, and a very, very simple, clean entry. So, But the one thing I would point out about this is it's this is right on the line as far as me defining this as a no demand. This is something that I personally do differently. Um, is I, I wouldn't look for a no demand. Not that it can't play out, but I don't think the probability is, that, is as good in this area. Once you're testing near the top, and you've seen my other videos too, how I mark the wick area as a, an important area of supply here in this case. So I wouldn't look for a no demand up in this area. I'd like to see it pull away. The reason why is low volume here in this area can can be a lack of uh, sell pressure so it could continue up you have to think that the higher prices should be bringing that supply if we want that weakness to be coming in so to have volume to have price come up and not see volume kick in it could be the lack of that supply coming in for it to continue I know this when it looks like you know from years of looking at charts when it looks like it could be the end of the move but it ends up continuing you're going to have that same situation where you don't have a lot of volume up there because that supply is no no longer able to keep price down, and so that's something you know the way I deal with it. And so this is an example where it's right on the line. You know, it's 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 not quite in this area, so it's just just barely valid. It just made it. It looks like as a no demand uh, in my book. So. Um, so you know, it's like I guess the general rule could be this is an area of supply. You're looking for, for supply to show up there or not show up there. This is an area of demand. At this point, we can say that because with weakness showing up, it's still been able to hold price up for 5, 10, 15 minutes. So there's enough buying in here to hold price up against that weakness. So we can call it an area of demand. So then we have no demand in that area. So that's the general rule. Look for no demands where there should be demand. You know, low volume up here can mean a lack of supply. Continue. All right. I think this video might be a bit long. Um, I'll keep going though. I could I guess I could edit it down if I need to. If I'm editing it, then it'll end right here. All right. I'm still here. Okay. Warning. This is just the notes I put. So, all right, if we're talking about this weakness here. Now, let's say this wasn't a no demand, but we saw this weakness and it starts moving down. We could still look for a no demand now. But this is just an example, just scrolling back in some recent examples of some things that can happen, where a widespread down bar like this, uh, down candle, is not something that you want to see um, as far as uh, looking, looking for your entry in this situation. Um, that could be, especially looking to, re to the reaction 
it didn't make any progress to turn back off of that. These wide candles are easily reversed. Easily reversed. <laughs> um, you'll just notice that repeatedly that when you get a uh, you know a bar that sticks out like that that's that's much wider. Um, that often it reverses that just as fast. Have you never noticed that before? <laughs> just take a step back and look. Um, an AR, I didn't even get to the automatic rally, but I don't know if I'll cover that in this video. Um, so that's that's a warning sign. I wouldn't be looking for that. And no demand after that. Nope, that was your chance. Um, you know, maybe coming up to test here, but all right. Let's see, I got other examples somewhere. Okay, this is another point that I can make here. Again, I don't even know what phase this is in right here, just looking at this isolated situation. Um, uh, so let's say we're in a markdown on the one hour. We're looking for shorts only. If price, price is going to give you these type of opportunities in a strong trend where you have these pullbacks that show no demand and then continue. So let's say we're in a markdown here. And obviously, it looks like we are. It's a downtrend. I haven't, haven't hit stopping volume. So here's a no demand after a pullback during a strong downtrend. You get the no demand there. It continues. Again, you get the pullback. It ends off with the no demand. Continues. So as long as you don't see, you know, as long as you're looking for shorts, based on the one hour and it's a trending and you know how to how to catch these little pullbacks in a trending move have a look clear examples there um, another thing to say about this is if you notice these retraces they're not going to 5618 fib there's a difference this, this video is packed with good information there's a difference between pulling back to this area and and not and seeing a no demand sooner and falling off like that and giving a, a continuation signal. Um, you're going to want to see volume come in here. So I wouldn't look for a pullback to a FIB area and, and look for it to come in and give me a no demand and an entry. No way. Uh, FIB area, this 50 to 618, if you haven't noticed by now, is so important. And the sell pressure needs to come in here. We need to see increased volume when you get into FIB zones uh, and the sell pressure to continue. So. We wouldn't look for that pull and no demand the way this sets up here. This is sooner. Maybe it has to do with other FIB levels, but to me it's irrelevant. As long as it's not in here or, you know, coming up on the 50 FIB, then uh, I'm fine with it. So that's a, that's a big point there. Um, now sometimes it, it depends on the situation, but sometimes I end up taking a trade that is... There's a little different point here, but I end up taking a trade that is close to a 50 fib, and we know that that's a dangerous spot where price can reverse. Um, and you, it just basically is adding risk. It doesn't mean that you can't take the trade every time. Um, if I really like this trade, um, I wouldn't mind getting in so close to fib where it could reverse. A slightly different point about, but buying into a fib area, this is just a good point to mention that when I think of that. Normally something I don't want to do, you know. Uh, it definitely adds risk is what it comes down to, the probability. But when the setup's really good um, and you're everything looks good to the left and the whole picture and all that. So then uh, I, would, I don't worry about it so much. All right. Um, back on track with this. So you notice the retraces just taking you know the obvious swings <clears throat> in this case a oh, little wrong thing taking the obvious swing drawing a fib seeing it pull back see this is not this no demand shows up it's all good because it's not up in here if it was we would need to see increased volume and you know like a buy climax type of activity all right I think I covered a lot of stuff here I hope that's everything I think the last thing I could say is why they work in the first place. I don't think I have any. Oh. Okay, that was that fib stuff I was talking about. Uh, here is here's a no supply. Okay, if you have a down move, pull up. There's a no supply. 
and that's confirming that no supply right there to enter the long. But look, you know that there's additional risk because you're at 50 to 618. And so only really if the setup looks great that I'm going to be buying right there. Otherwise, uh, you know, if it could pull back and I can get in lower, that would, that would be better. I don't see, did I mark any others? What did I mark here? Um, that's a good example here again of the FIB. Uh, strength in the background, you get the no supply, and the entry is right into a FIB. It's right at 618. It didn't break yet. Not a good time to enter. But if you notice, and of course it's stalled in there, but you notice once it cleared that area, again, it gave a no supply up there where there was supposed to be supply, and then there's no supply. And there's the confirmation of a no supply, and you're, you're way above it here. So you can have a clue that that's, that's really going to come out of the range at that point. All right, and the last thing I was going to say is why they work in the first place is the balance of supply and demand. And just to go back to this example, we have a down move. Supply is, is in charge here. There's more supply than demand. Price is moving down. You have demand come in. We know that. And then at this point, you have not only supply but demand. So you want to see the lack of supply. That's going to uh, explain this uh, in, the, in the other series. The lack of uh, supply is what's going to have you expect the up move now to occur. So, you know, we're looking for the imbalance in supply and demand. So knowing that demand showed up is nice, but there could be more supply and it could continue. So it's the lack of supply um, that's going to bring higher prices. So you have the imbalance, demand, and, of, and I mean, to be technical about it, it's not no supply. If there was absolutely no supply. You know, price would go up, shoot up like crazy. Um, so technically, it's not no supply, but it's a very, very small amount, relatively. <clears throat> so you know, it's it's the balancing act, supply and demand. So it's great that demand shows up, but until there's a lack of supply, there's not really a good good enough probability to take trades unless you know you want to be more aggressive. That makes it much much more conservative entry to wait for that imbalance to occur. And often you'll you'll find a trade that goes immediately into profit because you're getting in right on that point of imbalance at this point, demand overcoming supply, uh, you know, not enough supply to stop it at the point where there was supply before. And, you know, there's the immediate reaction into profit. Now, from there, um, again, if your stop is on the other side of a reversal, you'll have, you would sit through all this, and then you can end up with more on that trade. Um, so it, it did catch the point of that imbalance, and it played out immediately in price. But, you know, in the real world, you know, that's why we put our stop here. It's because the probability of it, you know, messing around this range and continuing is fine. But once it gets below here, um, then obviously there's enough supply to continue downward, and that's a whole other story. But uh, getting caught by those fake breaks may be a little, that risk there, uh, it's always a pain. But, you know, 5 to 10 pips below the bottom, and... Uh, you know, seeing how big that is, and you know, from a five-minute point of view, shouldn't be you know a 60, 70 pip stop. It should usually be 30 pips or so. Um, but anyway, that's another story with uh, risk reward and, and management and stuff. So I think I'll end the video here. Covered a lot of stuff. Hopefully helpful. Thanks for watching.